Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Sean Mitchell, Denver real estate agent with Compass, and this is your May 2022 real estate market update for the Denver metro area. Today we're going to cover median days on market, months of housing inventory for single family homes, number of new listings, median sale price, mortgage rates for the one and five year. And we're going to look back at all time rates as well to make sure we're getting a proper perspective of where current interest rates are at in comparison to where they've been. We're also going to cover Denver area unemployment and I'm going to take your questions from social media and provide a 30 day prediction or outlook on what I expect to see in this real estate market. So let's go ahead and jump in. Current median days on market is sitting at four days and that is in comparison to an average of 10 days. And what you see here in this chart with both the median and average is that houses are not sitting on the market very long. In fact, barely even seven days. Months of housing inventory for single family homes is sitting at one month. I don't have much to say here in this chart other than we just don't have a lot of inventory. And I'll probably reference this chart later on as we discuss what to expect in the real estate market moving forward here for 2022. Number of new listings is sitting at just over 5,000 homes. And if we were to compare this year's numbers to last year's numbers around this same time, last March we had 4,667 new listings. This year, a little over 5,000. So we're actually doing better than we were last year. This is very encouraging to see because we've been in a very depressed inventory market for a very long time. It's given sellers a lot of leverage. And this is actually a really good thing, a really healthy thing, because it means that it spreads out the number of buyers per house that, that they're actually having to compete with. And hopefully it gives the buyers a little bit more leverage to get something within a reasonable price and not give away the farm in terms of purchasing and all, all the due diligence processes. Median sale price is 680,000. That's in comparison to an average of 819,837. We're seeing some huge jumps over the last two real estate seasons, both in 2021 and this year. And to answer the age old question of, is this a good time to buy? The answer is probably yes, because if you were to have purchased a house back in April of 2021, the median sale price would have been 575,000 in comparison to April 2022, that's 680,000. So you're nearly $100,000 more to buy this year than if you were to have bought last year. And we see an even greater delta year over year with the average sale price. So if you were to have purchased last April, you would have paid on average 685,000 592. So just under 686,000 in comparison to this year, just under 820,000. Now let's take a look at the mortgage rates. And this is a snapshot from May 12th. You can see that the 30 year fixed over on the right in blue is 5.3%. The 15 year fixed is 4.48 and the 5.1 adjustable is 3.98. Now this can get a little bit daunting if you look at a shorter glimpse. You can see over on the right, a huge jump between the beginning of the year and today. However, I think it's important to look at the historical timeline of interest rates. Yes, they have gone up quickly. And my assessment of this is because it is in direct correlation to federal interest rates and inflation. However, 5.3% in comparison to, let's say, 20 years ago, it's not as bad. And of course, if we look even further back, people who bought houses in the 90s were paying uh, close to 10%. Unemployment rate is sitting at 3.6% for the month of March. That's in comparison to the national average of 3.6. So we're right in line with the national average, which is great. I will say though that before the pandemic, Colorado was actually beating the national average. So doing a little bit better and, and a little bit lower of an unemployment rate than the national average. So we've, we've yet to, to hit that yet, but it appears like based on what we're seeing here that that unemployment rate will continue to fall for the Denver metro area. 
Now let's jump into some of your questions from social media. My friend Earl asks, will my house in Alaska get attacked by bears? And I thought this one was quite funny and even though it's meant to be a little bit more humorous, I did do some research into how many bear attacks there are in Alaska. This is a research paper from the government and what they found was during a 17 year period between 2000 and 2017, 68 people were hospitalized for injury sustained during 66 unique bear attacks, averaging 3.8 bear attack hospitalizations per year. And during that same time period, there were 10 bear related fatalities resulting in eight unique bear attacks. Of the 10 fatal bear attack victims, 60% were Alaskan residents, 70% were male and 90% were white. So Earl, I hope that this new adventure in Alaska serves you and your family well, but please be careful because according to this research, you fall into this white male category. David Wells asked, do you see more supply coming to the market this fall? Where do you see interest rates? Uh, I'll take the interest rates question first. My personal opinion is I, I don't think based on what I know right now, that interest rates are going to change that much or that drastically. Uh, they probably will hover around five to five and a half percent. Maybe they get to six percent, but I don't think it's going to get much higher than that. That's just based off of what I see right now and, and what seems to happen. It seems like inflation is starting to plateau and maybe come down from that, that sharp increase this year. Now, in terms of inventory for the Denver metro area, Traditionally, we see inventory kind of trail off with a peak in about June or July. Less people start putting their house in the market. Now, the last couple of years has kind of bucked the trend. There's been more listings put on the market in the wintertime. That cold weather and snow has not deterred as many people. And I think that's in direct correlation to how many, like the high volume of buyers that there are out there that's enticing more sellers to put their houses on the market because they know they're going to get a fair price for the house that they sell. So is it going to be any better than the last couple of years? Probably not. It will be better historically, but I don't expect for it to be significantly more. And I, I don't expect for houses to sit any longer than they have over the last couple of years. So the higher interest rates may deter a lot of people and there may be a lot of buyer fatigue, buyers that have been shopping around, putting multiple offers on houses that decide to just put it on pause. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to significantly impact the total inventory for the Denver metro area. It may give you a little bit better leverage, but you may not notice a difference and you should expect to be in a competitive situation where you've got several buyers that you're having to compete with to get that house under contract. Great question though, David. Mojo Susan asks, does it hurt your home's value when your petition to get your appraisal lowered to save on property taxes? Now, what I think Susan is talking about here is the assessed tax value for the property. Does that hurt your property's value when you object to the county's assessed value, assessed tax value? And the answer is no. There's a difference between assessed tax value and appraised value and even market value. So they're kind of divided into three categories. You've got uh, appraised value, you've got tax value, and you've got market value. Appraised value is kind of looking at historic sales of homes. That's for bank and lending purposes. Typically, uh, assessed tax value is so that counties know how much to tax you on your house. And of course, market value can be very similar to appraised value, but market value is looking a little bit more into the future and what the market could pay. And in a lot of cases, especially in a seller's market, that's usually more, can be more than the appraised value. So this will not hurt your property's value to object to that assessed tax value. You want to pay less taxes, right? And that's the whole reason why um, you probably have a real estate agent that's helping you pull comps together that will reduce the amount of property tax you owe on that property. So good luck with that. Hope that goes well and let me know if you need a recommendation for an agent in your area to get you some of those uh, comps that will hopefully reduce your tax value. Joe Webb asks, how high will interest rates get before house values start dropping? This is definitely a question that a lot of people are asking and certainly something that I'm keeping a close eye on. Will interest rates cause home values to drop? 
And I think based on what I see right now, interest rates are, are probably going to peak or plateau at around what they're sitting at right now. Currently 5.3% for the 30 year fixed rate. Just at the beginning of this year, the 30 year fixed was 3.22%. So we've jumped quite significantly and we're inching close to a 2% hike on mortgage interest rates since the beginning of the year. We did see interest rates hit just under 5% back in, I think it was 2018 when I had some clients shopping and asking that same question of, are we buying at the wrong time? Are we buying at the peak? And in hindsight, it's, it's clear to see that, that there was still more ceiling there in terms of real estate market growth. And I can say confidently after texting with this particular client today that he's very happy that he bought at 520000 Now I think if he were to put his house on the market, we'd probably be able to get somewhere around 650000 So I think that in terms of interest rates and how that will impact housing prices, I don't see that having a big depression on the real estate market as of right now. I don't think that it's going to deter so many buyers or pull so many buyers out of the market that uh, sellers are going to have to drop prices and reduce prices to get that house sold. Logan asks, if I bought a house that's now two and a half times in value, should I hold until the market explodes or is it reasonably safe to move in this market without the looming concern of suddenly owing a lot more on a house than it's worth? I think this is a really great question and a lot of people have this same question. I do want to preface it by saying that I don't know your local market, so I'm going to speak based off of what I know and my personal experience in the Denver metro area. My guess is my educated guess is you'll probably be okay to sell and buy here in, in, in the short term, the next six to 12 months. I don't see things bottoming out. Where I would caution you on is in that buying situation, if you do end up getting into a bidding war where you're paying over asking price, rely on your real estate agent to pull some comps to know if you can expect an appraisal gap. Basically, when you, when you go in and you offer significantly over asking price, and lender hires an appraiser to go and do an appraisal value, they're going to look at historical sales of homes. So if the appraised value comes up lower than the purchase price, your lender is probably going to ask you to bring some additional cash to the table. They're not gonna loan you anymore. So be prepared for that and know that ahead of time, you usually can have a pretty good idea about whether that's going to happen by having a real estate agent pull comps before you put in an offer on this house. Now, the good thing is that that then, once you close on that house, becomes the new comp for the neighborhood. So real estate agents who are running comps to get an idea about where they should list their client's house are going to use your new sale price for that. So it does work out to your advantage in the long run, but if you're in a situation where you don't have a ton of cash down payment, you may be in a sticky situation. So just be prepared for that. Uh, most lenders, it's almost impossible now to, to borrow more money than what the house is, is worth. Will home values drop anytime soon? Will we see a real estate um, uh, downturn, it is possible, but I think you're going to hedge that by your lender requiring you to put more money down, which means that you're not borrowing any more than what you can afford today. Starman Born asks, is it better to purchase when prices are, are low and rates are high or prices are high and rates are low? The first question that I would ask you is, are you ready to buy right now? Do you have enough money to be able to qualify for a loan? If the answer is yes, and I'd say, regardless of what type of market it is in, it's probably a good time to buy. The second question that I would ask you is, how long do you plan to stay in this house? If it's short term, or you've got some uncertainty about maybe a job situation, or you're thinking about moving, um, I, would, I would probably wait to purchase a house. In the event there is a real estate slowdown and you do kind of get caught up in that and you do need to sell, that may hit you in a negative way. However, if you are planning on staying in that house long term, let's say five years or more, you're probably going to be okay with weathering through any sort of real estate downturn. So if you buy a house today and the interest rate is at 5.3%, if you hold on to that long enough, there's a good chance that you can refinance that house when the interest rate does 
begin to go down. For example, if you were to have purchased a house in April of 2013, the median sale price was 275,000 in the Denver metro area, average was 334,882. And April of 2022, that median sale price is 680,000. And the interest rate in April of 2013 was around 3.5%. The moral of the story here is that if you've got a long-term investment strategy, you're probably going to be okay regardless of what type of market it is in. If you know you're not going to be stationary for a little while, I'll probably hold off and, and, and wait to purchase something. Or if you do purchase something, but you can rent that property out as you move abroad or move out of state, you'll probably be okay. Krishna G asks, are you seeing signs of a slowdown? How many buyers in the last few weeks had closed the purchase at lower locked in rates in three to four and a half percent range? Yeah, really good question. All of my buyers who've closed in the last month or so have had interest rates that, that are under 5%. Um, of course, buyers jumping into the market today will, will face a different story, but in terms of a slowdown, I was slightly concerned about this maybe a couple of weeks ago about, well, at least questioning how increasing interest rates was going to affect the real estate climate. But uh, I can say today that it, I've got a relatively high confidence that it's not going to have any material impact in the short term. There's no way to predict what will happen sort of like macro level in the next six to 12 months or even further out. But as, t as I see today, based on looking at the numbers from April and where things are heading in terms of inflation and interest rate, I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, I think it may be slightly slower, but I don't think it's going to be a bottom, a bottoming out, thankfully. William asks, do you see a rise in housing inventory enough to affect prices, especially if the 30-year rate hits 6%? I love this question because no one really knows. We haven't seen a 6% interest rate in quite a while. Will it impact housing prices significantly or noticeably? Maybe slightly. It may pull some buyers out of the market. Some buyers may decide to wait, but I think there are still a lot of buyers that need to find a place, need to buy a place, and the inventory is just so low. We're looking at, you know, currently one to less than one month of inventory. So we need to see things shift pretty significantly for houses to sit longer on the market and for sellers to lower their price to get things sold. I just don't see that happening in the short term. In 12 months, could that happen? Possibly, but we could continue to see a healthy growth. Maybe not as dramatic and stark of a year over year growth as we've seen in the last 12 to 24 months, but I think it'll still continue to grow gradually. What's my 30 day prediction? Inventory likely to peak sometime in the next 30 days, maybe a little bit longer, but we tend to see that peak somewhere in June or July. Interest rates seem to be stabilizing. I don't expect for them to get any higher than what they are today, at least in the short term. And we may see a slightly less aggressive market as I addressed the question just a moment ago. It may pull some buyers out, but is it going to have a huge impact and is it going to be a significant change in the amount of inventory that we see in the Denver metro area? Probably not, probably not, at least right now. Now, uh, it, we're, we're, we're somewhere, we're a little past mid-month in the month of May as I'm recording this. We'll get a new set of numbers, new set of real estate numbers at the beginning of June, and we'll take another look at this. But it's, it's, it's based on what I see right now, I don't see anything dramatic happening in the real estate market, so much so that the real estate market's gonna, gonna bottom out anytime soon. Sean Mitchell, Denver Real Estate Agent with Compass. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've got a question, please put it in the comments. And uh, if you're looking to get into the buy or sell market in the Denver metro area or along the front range, I would love to apply for the job. So my contact information will be at the end of this video. And for everyone else, thanks so much for watching and talk to you on the next one.